you'll excuse me, I'll stand up. After, uh, after seven years in the House of Commons, I really can't speak sitting down. <laughs> also, um, being 61 now, I can't read except at this distance. So that will, that will also help. Uh, thanks, Janet, for saying, very nice to see you yet again. I, I take that as a slight. It's good to be asked. I don't agree uh, entirely uh, with, with Lindra, and I, I don't agree at all with George Orwell. Uh, George Orwell is actually a very good example of uh, precisely the ill that he thinks he has diagnosed. He is a wonderful propagandist. Uh, he is a, a fantastic writer. He's one of the finest stylists, the finest stylist who's ever, who ever existed in, in British journalism. And this can quite easily obscure from you the fact that George Orwell was completely wrong about almost everything. Um, he was uh, a socialist, or, or thought he was. Um, he backed the wrong side in the Spanish Civil War. And he believes, or believed, that it is by language that the ruling political classes can manipulate the people. Uh, 1984, which we're not in a sense discussing, but which really, in, in lots of ways, is the translation into a novel, uh, Linda, of, of, of what's in this essay. 1984 is a very good example of that. You see, the problem with, with George Orwell is that he was not really a Marxist. I am really a Marxist, uh, though I believe in capitalism. I'm a Marxist in the sense that I, I think that at the end and underlying everything are the clashes of interests and of interest, interest groups. And I think that language is only a consequence, an epiphenomenon of that. It's not the cause of that. And that if you try just to look at the language that are people, people are using, you'll miss what is really happening. Orwell says here, right at the beginning of the essay, that the attitude, the belief that he wants to combat is the belief that language is a natural growth and not an instrument which we shape for our own purposes. I think that language is a natural growth. We do shape it for our own purposes, but it's the people, it's individuals, it's ordinary people who shape the language. And when politicians try to do it, they always fail. Nothing is easier than standing on a, a stage like this and ranting against uh, the awful uh, cliches, the obfuscatory language, the evasions, the, the vagueness, the fudging, uh, and the downright lies uh, in which uh, politicians clothe their purposes. The trouble is that we see straight through that. We see through it straight away. When people talk in obfuscatory language, we think they're talking in obfuscatory language. They're either hiding something or they don't know what it is they want to say, usually uh, the latter. When politicians start talking about investment instead of uh, public spending, uh, for a while we think, hmm, that's a good idea, let's think of it as investment. And then when we've heard the word investment for the umpteenth time, we realize that investment is just the new word for public spending, and we don't believe it anymore. When politicians and others uh, tell uh, school children uh, that they mustn't use words like queer or poof any longer. They must now use the new word gay, uh, which is uh, uh, a polite, nice word for people of whom we are not supposed to disapprove. Uh, school children simply turn the use of the word gay into an insult in, in, instead of uh, what it is supposed to be. People, in the end, will bring to their language their own prejudices, their own interests, uh, their own beliefs. And if the language doesn't seem to suit, then they'll change the meaning of the words. Not, not so very long ago, well, I think about uh, 15, 20 years ago, the National uh, Society for Spastics, or the Spastics Society, changed its name to SCOPE because spastics had become a term of abuse in the playground. I don't think they were wrong uh, to do that. I understand very well the reasons uh, that they they, they do it. I think it's a marvellous society. However, there is now a playground word, scopa, 
And, and scopa means uh, someone who is uh, a bit of a fool or dislocated in some way. Uh, we, we are not easily manipulated by language, not nearly as easily manipulated by language as Orwell thinks, because Orwell is, in the end, an autocrat. He is, in the end, suffering from what socialists call false consciousness. They don't really know the truth. They don't really know their own interests, and politicians need to tell them the truth and tell them their own interests. I put it uh, to you that you know when politicians are lying, that you know when politicians are using euphemisms, that you know when journalists are avoiding the point, that you know when people are trying to foist on you nice phrases uh, euphemisms for things that are not very nice. You know straight away, you are not fooled, you see through it. The English language is your own language, it is not the property of politicians or the media, and nothing that we may say can change that.